Welcome to the Faculty Lounge. I'm Paul Houtman, Dean of the University of Tennessee Graduate School of Medicine, and I'm thrilled to have with me today Lisa Duncan, Chair of the Department of Pathology. Lisa, welcome. Thank you. Now, we often uh, in the Faculty Lounge talk about the background of our faculty, and uh, I think today should be no exception. I did a little bit of searching in your bio and found out that you were born in New Tazewell, Tennessee. Not Tazewell, Tennessee, but New Tazewell, Tennessee. And there is a difference. Do you want to tell us about that difference? I'll let you tell the difference. Well, from my extensive research, I found out that New Tazewell developed around a railroad depot that I guess was supposed to be in Tazewell, but wasn't. And so you had the two towns. The 2010 census recorded 3,037 citizens of New Tazewell. I don't know if the, there's been growth in the last 10 years. But seriously, tell us what it was like to grow up there. You subsequently pursued both undergraduate and medical school uh, education in uh, Johnson City at East Tennessee State University. So give us some context for that as someone who grew up in East Tennessee on a farm. So um, I was the first uh, person in my family um, to go to college. Um, but even though a lot of the people in my family did not have formal education, education was extremely important. Um, there was a lot of reading involved, um, a lot of teaching that happened between farmers and among other people. So um, lifelong learning was something that was stressed as an importance even from an early age. And what made you think about medicine per se uh, during your undergraduate studies? So um, I actually started out thinking I would be a vet um, because working on the farm we had a lot of cattle and the farmers always um, provided their own veterinary care. So I got quite practiced at it. So it seemed like a natural thing to do. Um, but my grandfather um, was diagnosed with TB and he was a patient here at this hospital. So as an early teenager, I had the opportunity to visit him in this hospital, and I, it really changed um, the course of my life. And I thought, I probably want to do people medicine instead of veterinary medicine. So that's kind of how it evolved. And so during medical school, um, you made the choice to go into pathology. And we were talking uh, just a few minutes ago about the decision to go into pathology as opposed to cardiology. Tell us about that. <clears throat> Correct. Um, I had the fortune uh, while I was an undergraduate to uh, meet a cardiologist and he kind of became my mentor. Had a tremendous amount of respect for him and uh, really, really had a lot of respect for him as a physician. So cardiology seemed like a great thing to do. I went to medical school thinking I would be a cardiologist. I could already read an EKG before I went to um, because of him. But was it an equine EKG? <laughs> no, it was a people EKG. <laughs> so. Um, when I was in my first year of medical school, we had a histology course, and I remember the first time I looked into a microscope and thought, wow, I can get paid to do this. Um, just loved pathology, loved being able to look at an image and make a diagnosis, and it's, it's been a career that I thoroughly enjoyed. It was the right choice. And after you did your residency here at the University of Tennessee Medical Center, you also did a fellowship in uh, cytopathology. Yes. So how common is it for trainees to get additional uh, education in a fellowship uh, uh, like surgical path, like cytology and so forth in the field right now? It's kind of been an evolution. When I was a resident, pathology was a five-year program. Then uh, a few years after I graduated, it became a four-year program. Um, before that, people kind of used that fifth year as a concentration. Um, but after that, it became almost 100% of residents graduating from programs do a fellowship. So the reason that I happened to come upon a fellowship is we were going to start a fellowship program here. And I had been a faculty member for two years, and I approached the chairman of the department at that time and said I would like to be the first fellow because I want to have another board under my belt. So I was the first fellow. So first generation to go to college, then medical school, then residency, and then a fellowship. So congratulations on all that. It was an interesting year. <laughs> well, one of the big advances in the department um, over the last year or so is the development of a biobank, which I know took uh, many years of hard labor for you to get to this point. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the biobank, what it's designed to do, and what its impact may be on the local community? So um, we have been working on it uh, for a few years, and it's definitely been a team effort. Um, 
So what we really want the biobank to be is a, a, a source of, um, for research. And what we're talking about is personalized medicine type research, translational medicine research. We have the patient population here. We have the faculty who can do it. Um, it makes sense to have a biobank. What we're talking about is being able to preserve um, samples of all kinds and provide those samples to researchers so that DNA, DNA analysis can be conducted, proteomics, whatever uh, analysis, uh, depending on the research protocol. But more importantly is to also provide clinical data with those samples uh, because it makes that analysis possible um, so that you can determine outcomes and parse out patients depending on their tumor types and their outcomes. And it's East Tennessee's first biobank, right? It is. Um, there are two in Nashville. Um, there's one in Emory. There's one at Duke. So they're uh, primarily concentrated in academic medical centers, but it's definitely the first for East Tennessee. Um, when we were even talking about the concept of a biobank in the beginning, it's always been that we want to do something that enriches our patients here in this community, and we definitely think that it can do that. And one thing that's really important in, in biobanking is oversight, and I know you've worked especially hard to ensure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Tell us a little bit about the degree of oversight that uh, you've put into place. So um, biobanks have to have some type of governance structure, and there are all kinds of recommendations from the Nas National Institutes of Health and accreditation bodies about what those governance structures should look like. But essentially, um, we've designed our governance structure to uh, comply with those recommendations, but also we want it to be patient-centric and something where we know that we can tell our patients that we're running our biobank in an ethical and a compliant manner. And having said that, that's been a true team effort, and we have relied heavily on the IRB department in the Graduate School of Medicine, and um, they've provided tremendous insight They've helped with the consent process. They're actually now a part of our quality committee for the biobank and developing an audit process um, for our consenting. So I think all of those things work together and it, it's been very positive. And it's an exciting time in the department too because of the initiation of a surgical pathology fellowship starting in July and mm -hmm. the timing couldn't be better with the biobank. We are very excited about that. Um, it will be our first fellow. Um, he actually has a background in biomedical engineering and spent some time at MIT. So um, he, he's now working for the Department of Defense doing a fellowship and his uh, insight into data analytics is going to be very helpful for the biobank. Um, he's going to be primarily doing oncology as his uh, surgical pathology fellowship. We have a huge case mix in that area, so we're very excited about having him. And we're very excited with all the developments and to have you as chairman of pathology. Um, so thanks for joining us. It's been a delight. Uh, this is Paul Hauptman on behalf of the Graduate School of Medicine. Until next time, thanks for joining us.